scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you. Prayer can turn a very timid canal you into a spiritual version of yourself. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Number two, I just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one. Making requests and obtaining promises. This is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises. Every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises, the platform for making this happen is prayer. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Making requests and obtaining promises. Number three, very quickly. The third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation. What is spiritual legislation? Decrees. Creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly job 22 and verse 28 thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways it, you shall decree a thing it happens in the place of prayer numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do unto you. Not just as, as much as you desire, if you speak in my ears, I will do it just like you have said it. Making decrees, obtaining promises, then spiritual legislation, and then number four, warfare and intercession. The last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31 very quickly ezekiel 22 the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it he said but i found none as a result 31 it says therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way i have recompensed on their head saith the lord these are the four dimensions of prayer i've done this teaching I'm, I'm i'm reminding you for this series that if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom you must understand prayer you must understand prayer men ought always to pray and not to faint and that at any point you pray you are doing one or more or all of these four things engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development obtaining promises is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit in the place of prayer number three making decrees and establishing realities in your life number four engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession at any point you go to pray these are the things 
that are captured in the prayer life of a believer unfortunately please look up many believers do not pray not for transformation not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions not even to make decrees over their lives maybe they do a bit of it in church and largely most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession no wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for God. They love God with all their hearts, but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace, the wisdom, the power of God. You must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery, I must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle as a lifestyle prayer as a lifestyle not a strategy for disaster management prayer as a lifestyle for most people conditions have to provoke you to pray a negative report and you quickly come to pray and Satan knowing that when he wants to attack you he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray so he will allow gradually gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised understanding prayer i believe in the power of prayer i am a product of the ministry of prayer we must submit ourselves to the ministry of prayer you must obtain grace from god i pray that you will believe the things that i'm teaching you that a believer who is determined to pray with understanding please take note with understanding i submit to you that in the body of christ there is a lot of zeal people pray and pray and even if you are god the way you see people pray you are wondering why is this person's life like this i can tell you that most of our prayer is not guided by understanding for many believers we think is the stretch and the energy invested that is equal to results it is not so most believers do not pray according to scripture most believers do not pray according to knowledge there is such a thing as praying amiss have you read it in scripture apostle james said it is possible for one to pray amiss he says let that man not think he will receive anything from the lord prayer that every time you bow your knees to pray do you know how much of a blessing you will be if people know that your prayer really works so when you tell them i want to pray for you they are happy there are many people if you say i want to pray for you they just laugh at you because they know that you have not even sorted the subject of prayer you don't even understand what you are saying change that narrative with determination god wants the average believer listening to me to get to a point where you don't just pray but you understand the jurisdiction and the assignment of prayer whilst you are seated in one minute i'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from god you are seated inside you are seated outside obtain grace let it be from the depth of your heart father i obtain grace i obtain grace to fan my prayer altar back in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, someone is praying. She prande kaskede la hasibash, magata prande gede belekosiata. I obtain grace. I can pray negative things out of my life. I can pray the will of God into my life and destiny. You want to strive for mastery, you must understand prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible recommends, listen carefully. The Bible recommends an approach to prayer. The most effective dimension of prayer, second only to praying in the spirit, is praying the promises of God write it down please praying the promises of God Isaiah 41 and verse 21 the Word of God as you know defines the boundary 
of God's commitment to the believer. That means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. Let me repeat myself. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. The word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. It says, produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Do you know what this means? Approach prayer like a legal system in the realm of the spirit. Don't just say, God bless me. Based on what? Don't just say, God change my life. You are God. That's the kind of prayer we pray. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. Arise, oh God. Based on what? He says, produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. That means bring my word to me in prayer. The scriptural basis that commits me to move on that wise. Are we together? So the devil is plaguing your family, plaguing your life. And you say, God, I'm tired of this situation. In Jesus' name, I assure you, you reported your situation, but you didn't pray. What is the basis? Lord, bless me. Uh -uh. What is the basis? Even Jesus himself, I've taught you this. When Satan came to Jesus, he said it is written. It is written is what gives strength to your prayer. It is not what you are saying that gives strength to your prayer. It is saying what is written. When you say what you want, it is not prayer. When you say what is wrong, it is not prayer. It's when you connect what you want and what is wrong to what God has said. Now that is prayer. Father, your word declares that though my beginning be small, my later end will greatly increase. Based on this truth, in the name of Jesus, I place a demand upon the grace that makes for advancement and increase. Now you are praying. As simple as it sounds, I can tell you many believers will keep shadow boxing and believing they are praying. The promises of God. I've taught you here that the word of God contains three things essentially. Every time you open scripture, the word of God is a capture of promises, principles, and prophecies. Every time you open your Bible, you are interacting with number one, the promises of God. Number two, the principles of the kingdom. Number three, prophecy. Can I tell you this? If you are a leader here of a prayer group, you are a leader here of any prayer platform, don't just tell people, pray, pray, pray. Bring the scriptures that support what you are asking. If not, I can guarantee you, you wasted your time. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He would have said god this is not fair he said remember i have worked diligently in other words remember what your word says about those who serve your house can i tell you this if you know how to bring forth your strong reason you can go to bed you will commit god and and destroy dislodge anything that is not of god in prayer i speak life i speak life you're gonna leave oh my brother my sister i speak life you are the head and not the tail you will prevail I speak life. don't give up the fight for your life you shall live and not die. Listen to me. This thing you see is a very powerful song. But when you get to the place of prayer, you must find what God has said. Otherwise, you have not prayed. Father, I bring before you your word. Your word declares that life and death has been set before me. Blessing and cursing that I have the power to choose life. Now in honor to your word, I choose life. 
you are making decrees it's being registered in the realm of the spirit when you are saying it demons are hearing you and there is a basis for your confidence what is written Father, your word declares that a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side, that none shall harm me. It is not just what is written that blesses you, it's what is written that you have found and you engage with understanding even in the place of prayer. I found your word and I did it. It was a joy and a rejoicing unto me. Is someone learning? So your first assignment when you want to engage in prayer, especially in understanding, is to make sure you have the patience to bring the scriptures that, begin, that, that become the basis of your defense and of making your petition. Don't just go and pray and ramble around. Internet has made it easy to pray efficiently. If you want to pray concerning your health, say for instance, you can go and just Google prayers concerning health. Different scriptures will come. It's your responsibility to filter it by the Spirit to the two or three. If you can find just two or three, that may be sufficient. Go to the place of prayer. Lord, I bring before you this. And you are praying. Kailashko Prandagata. And while you are praying, you find out that things just begin to shift and change. Believers, please hear me. If we don't teach believers the power of prayer and gaining mastery even in the place of prayer many people will stop praying they will be tired and say this thing does not work the prayer that works is the prayer that is connected to scripture the prayer that work is the prayer that is derived of the spirit outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work let me repeat outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work it just becomes a motion of dissipating energy prayer is based on what god has said prayer is based on what you want that is connected to what god has said your first assignment is to find out what he has said that relates to what you want now you can go to the place of prayer with understanding the bible says this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us so it tells you there is a possibility that you will not be heard if it's not according to his will hallelujah number two what is the second principle that we need to engage if we want to strive for mastery please write this down understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom the first is understanding prayer the second is understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom I can spend weeks after weeks teaching this understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom that means your mastery in this kingdom is based on the degree to which you understand and engage the laws and the principles of the kingdom remember our initial scripture that he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 please someone is rising to a point of mastery in the name of jesus matthew 16 19 and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven say the keys of the kingdom please shout it one more time say the keys of the kingdom and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven now king james did not do justice to what this really means the expression is that you have a a way of seeing what has been bound in heaven then you now bind it on earth give us amplified amplified will give us a clearer picture of what the bible says now listen i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful that's what binding is on earth must be what is already bound in heaven are you seeing now 
and what is already bound whatsoever you lose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loose in heaven he is saying that you have the power by access to the keys of the kingdom through knowledge you can know what has been declared from the realm of the spirit to happen in your life and with these keys you bind and lose with this key you declare lawful and you declare unlawful as far as your life is concerned the keys of the kingdom you gain mastery by holding the keys of the kingdom in Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 Jesus calls it the key of knowledge Luke 11 and 52 he said woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourselves and them that were entering you hindered what wickedness you didn't enter into that realm of mastery through knowledge and those who now want to enter you are stopping them jesus said woe to you he cursed those who were trying to stop people from gaining exact spiritual understanding listen carefully every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you it means there is something wanting as far as your spiritual knowledge in that area is concerned every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you it means that there is no knowledge in that area or there is insufficient knowledge in that area leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 and moses said this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you there is what you must know that activates what you do and the bible says the glory of the lord will appear unto you believers listen to me your prayer this night should be psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5 psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5 it says show me thy ways O lord teach me thy paths verse 5 lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation on thee do i wait all day he said teach me open my eyes so god to see take away this age-long ignorance in my life i want to gain mastery to knowledge i'm tired of being afraid going out in the morning and wondering if i'll come back i must fortify myself with knowledge i'm tired of being afraid because of what is happening around the economy i can rise through mastery and gain knowledge of the laws of the kingdom most of us know that moses saw the glory of god but i will tell you the first thing moses asked for was not the glory of god exodus chapter 33 there were two requests that moses made the first was in verse 13 and the second was in verse 18 please let's look at it quickly now therefore exodus 33 13 i pray thee if i have found grace in your sight he says show me now thy way show me your way was his first request then you go to verse 18 and he now prays a second request and he said i beseech thee show me your glory there is a relationship between his ways and his glory show me your way show me your glory so the bible says he made his, made his ways known to moses but to israel they only saw his acts the results without gaining mastery on how to reproduce them hallelujah listen to me ladies and gentlemen when i found this truth i made up my mind that i was going to learn the laws of the kingdom no matter how many I will search for them one by one by one by one by one until I gain mastery. I will study and restudy and restudy until my life becomes a capture of these principles. Most of you have not mastered the laws of the kingdom. I submit to you. 
and i submit to you that it's not as easy as it sounds it takes a lot of dedication and intention to say i'm not going to live my life shadow boxing i will learn these principles every facet of your life has the ways of god that control it finances your health longevity ministry influence there are laws of the kingdom please pay attention you see we live in very troubling times right now and so many people are already troubled and perplexed wondering what will become of my life your immunity in the days that we live is the fortification that the knowledge of these laws provide for you these laws can surround and secure you like chariots you can know of a truth that you will stand the test of time because these laws are backed up by god's own integrity hear what i'm telling you the spirit of death will look for everybody including you i don't mean to scare you but it is the truth if you do not know the ways of god to keep yourself alive you will be surprised thinking you will not die till you die the spirit of poverty will look for everybody including you even jesus said satan cometh to me but he does he did not find anything but he came are we together in this kingdom our defense is based on the power of the laws of the kingdom that we understand and we engage for tonight i will take two of these spiritual laws listen carefully and then we'll pray we'll continue next week I hope someone is learning. God of heaven. These laws are so powerful and irrefutable that if you hang on to these laws and you learn these principles, Ladies and gentlemen, your life will be a surprise even to you. Are we together? The first law is the law, I call it the sacrifice of total surrender. Just write it down. The sacrifice of total surrender. 1 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. The sacrifice of total surrender. second corinthians 5 14 and 15 please give it to us the sacrifice of total surrender it says for the love of christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead verse 15 please look up it says and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again the sacrifice of total surrender it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. matthew chapter 16 and verse 25 this is one of the most fundamental principles for the making of champions in the kingdom this law is a sacrifice it will take everything from you but it will give you everything you want to gain mastery in the kingdom learn the ways of god for whosoever will save his life what will happen to him you will lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake that person will find it let me tell you this you are not ready to do business with god until you die to yourself there are two things you have to conquer sin and self if you conquer sin you are still not free it has to be sin and self 
What an unbeliever needs to conquer is sin. What a believer needs to conquer is self. Both must die for you to rise. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. I want to show you a very powerful but neglected spiritual law. For as long as God is still something you use to make a good life, for as long as God is still a deity that you use to be a champion, you use him to get prosperity, you use him to get this, forget about certain levels of mastery, not with power, not with wisdom. If it is the God of the Bible that you want to see him stronger, mighty in your life, it must be the law of complete, perfect, unassuming surrender. Another word for it is death. I know you don't like what I'm teaching you, but please hear me. If you are striving for mastery, you have to obtain grace from God. Die to your desires. Die to your feelings. Die to whatever it is. Anything that is not the Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. There are many people who want to gain mastery over the anointing. They just see wonderful things happen. They want anointings. They, no, you have to be dead. God does not trust you when you are alive to yourself. Your tendencies, the variables are too many. When you are dead, he can give you money. Because if you give it, if you keep one million on a dead man's body, you come and meet it there. But if somebody is alive, even if he's sick, and you keep one million there, you will come and find 750,000. He didn't go out, yet the money left. The tendencies of men. Are we together? <laughs> Let me tell you this. There are many believers that take God for granted. They think God just place abracadabra they pray all kinds of prayers they want high level power they want this level of grace they want influence and the price of death is a price they are unwilling to pay i tell you sincerely behind every strange dimension of mastery and grace is blood dripping on that altar the price for life i have taught you is death The size of God is so heavy, if you carry him alive in yourself, it will kill you. Listen to me. Many of you here desire higher levels of grace. You want to see God use you so mightily. You know what it means to die to yourself? It means there is nothing and no one that will ever have the ability to replace God in your life. To die does not mean to throw away your plans. It means to demote them to a point that God stands at the epicenter of your life. Lovest thou me more than this? Many believers do not know. Let me tell you, if you like fast for one year, if you like pray every day for the rest of your life, if you like do whatever you do, if you do not cross the gate of death, forget about mastery and power with God. When God comes to meet you, he would demote everything that is him. Let me tell you how God demotes it. He does not demote it by asking it to go down. He will allow it to fail you one by one till you are left with nothing. And you will come and say, God, I thought it's a job. I thought it's this one. How many of you can give up everything for Jesus as you are sitting? I know you will easily lift your hand and say, me. And I tell you, don't be careless in lifting your hands because he will come to you. It's a very difficult law that you need the grace of God to keep. Because remember, you've spent your life building your reputation. You've spent your life fine-tuning your ambition. And here comes the king of glory, pushing everything and wanting to take that place. It's as if you don't have a life again. Lord, you want to just come and damage my life and my self-worth? And he tells you, I don't kill. I only kill to resurrect. I give you another body 
a life of beauty and glory help those under the anointing you want to see the power of god you want to see the grace of god forget all these things i'm i know what i'm saying you package seed offering come and drop it he will not impact that realm on you our 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 generation just believes that money does everything just squeeze an envelope and drop it and you want to drop a realm of power that only death death can take you no sir there is a place for those things but that is not it total surrender total surrender that is the price your prayer now finds value your word study now finds value when that surrender is in place it's a sacrifice i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that you offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship do you know what it means to be surrendered you lose the ability to tell god no to be totally surrendered means you have killed the option of no forever whatever you want my answer is yes whatever you say no more argument with you you are final authority in all things abraham take now thy son thy only son and abraham carry the son to go even jesus himself that was the law that he engaged he came to the earth in obedience to the father even when he didn't the bible did not hide the fact that jesus himself didn't want to die go and read your bible in gethsemane the bible tells us his prayer content father if it be thy will jesus shift this cup away from me but he said nevertheless not my will that is the language of men who have died lord truly this is what i've desired but nevertheless not my will not my will man of god not my will businessman not my will all this our intelligence where we push god out of our lives and say get out of the way god you don't know i am a nigerian we keep crash landing because we don't allow the wisdom of god to take precedence nevertheless not my will i will keep telling you this i love you so much with all my heart but if the god of heaven will ask me to close koinonia now i stand before the god of heaven to tell you that this will probably be the last service that's it don't say you love him more he will test it more than what more than what is someone learning now you want to strive for mastery you have to get to a point where your mind is spiritually minded spiritually minded lord if it is for you there is nothing i would not do for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory lord i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king i want to be where you are gotta be where you are listen can i tell you there is nobody sitting here or standing here including the man speaking to you who has the power to give your all no you only have the power to give god access to and to be enthroned above it nobody has the power to give everything you can only give god access to take everything believe me there are things that are too precious in your life they cannot go you just have to give him access and say lord i don't even know what i'm doing but you must be my god ah. hmm. gotta be where you are 
Gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. You see, let me tell you. Believers, hear me. When you get to this realm, where nothing else matters to you, anything that comes close to God has already failed because God is in a position jealously guarded. God says, you've done this for me. I know the things you should want and look for. And since you have prioritized me, you will begin to see things you did not even pray for. Look, let me tell you, fearful is the man who pushes past that realm of pain and gets to that point where in reality and in experience you have enthroned jesus above any and everything there is nothing god will not give you believe me when i tell you this i've shared with you my experience where god told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you please help them if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure when I worship you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure. hear me there are many of you looking at me right now you are only in church because of the need that brought you you are only in church because of something driving you one altar from your village pursued you and you ran to the house of god that is important you are welcome but can i tell you you must get to a point with god where you say lord i'm no longer playing games i mean it seriously whether you bless me or not you are still my god whether you prosper me or not you are still my god whether my requests are answered or not you are still my god i'm not playing this church business with you of exchange where i say give me breakthrough for my loyalty you are not a politician everything let it be yours can i tell you this it is a very painful decision but if you make that decision where everything belongs to him your life your reputation your strength your energy now you have entered the realm of power now you have entered the realm of favor now you have entered the left the realm of uncommon grace now you have entered the, the realm of wisdom where you become a friend of god it takes death to be a friend of god all these songs people just claim i'm a friend of god do you know what it means to be a friend of god can I hide this from my friend Abraham? The realm of friendship is the realm of revelation. He comes to you. Believers, hear me. We need to teach the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that God is not all about miracles. That God is not all about breakthroughs and signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are wrong. But let me tell you, if all we keep chasing after, prostituting around, just miracle, breakthrough, power, result, money. No, you have to move past those realm and get to a point where you say, Lord, you are my everything. There's no plan B. There is no plan B. We die here. There is no plan B. I'm not just trying to use you so that if something works, no. For as long as you have options to God, forget about gaining mastery. Forget about seeing his power and his glory. Man of God, if you still have plan B as to who empowers you, God will never come to you. The sacrifice of total surrender. So then death walks in us. That life will walk in you. Don't you think you just stretch your hands at sick people and say be healed and then they are healed. God is not a magician. Don't think you just sit down and say where is my destiny helper? Come and bless me. No. After this series, we are getting into the series where I'm going to be teaching you on covenants. And you will learn, I will show you something very powerful that will change your life.
when you go and meet occultists and these people who walk they don't hear anything like word of mouth i'm going to be loyal i'll be serious and nonsense you are just talking nonsense bring a piece of paper they say nonsense a paper that you can tear is your own blood you bring i hope you know for satan to take you serious you must bring your blood and then they cut they, they will open so you've, you've seen these things in nigerian films and the rest and then they make some incisions and now satan can be sure that you are serious with him what makes you think you just fold your arms and casually emotionally come to god and say god just give me one billion plus anointing for nations i promise i will serve you and you think god is so stupid you say i love you i died for you take it no there is a realm of death where he's the one who brings you alive you no longer live for yourself otherwise you can pray and pray and pray and god cannot trust you it will be a risk to give you that kind of power it will be a risk to give you that kind of pedigree it will be a risk to give you that kind of wealth why am i teaching you this i truly believe with all my heart that we're entering seasons where matthew 25 is about to be replayed in the church you know what matthew 25 is the parable of the talents god is coming like a mighty wind upon believers and he's beginning to trust them with things for nations i tell you this you will start seeing god give gifts to men in spectacular ways you will start seeing god trust men with graces for territories and nations the question is can your death afford you that gift He gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two talents. There are prophets that will rise like never before. There are apostles that will rise like never before. There are businessmen that will rise like never before. There are politicians that will rise like never before. You will see levels of power that will dumbfound principalities and powers. But let me tell you, the price is not just fasting. The price is not just prayer. The price is not just Bible study. The price is death. All of you must be on that altar for that fire to come. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you Hey Oh, you're all Shema la sata prandege de bala suprakata Hallelujah. By this teaching tonight, God is already answering someone. Why is it that some things look hard? God has seen that there is a measure of death you are unwilling to get into. That is why certain levels of power and knowledge and wisdom may not easily come to you. God has vetted you. That was his, listen, the hand that wrote in the days of the king, king, I think that was Belshazzar also, also. The hand wrote, and hear what Daniel interpreted the writing to be. Mene, mene tekel He said, you have been weighed. So God weighs men. You have been weighed in a balance. And you have been found wanting. I weighed your motif. I weighed your desire for wanting that business to work. I weighed your motif for wanting the anointing. I weighed your motif for wanting a great vision. I found it wanting. Let me tell you sincerely. There are some things in our lives, it's not the devil causing it. It is that the level of death we need to submit to, to allow that magnitude of blessing, we have not yet attained it. Be 
businessman it does not take god anything to arrange systems that bring you millions and billions i assure you this god of heaven has shown once and again that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him but there is a level of death you know what it means to sit down with hundreds of billions in your account in cash and assets and still roll on the ground before god go and ask solomon what happened to him go and ask king solomon solomon who saw the manifested presence of god twice everything he wanted he had but he got to a point in his life where the egyptian women turned him and he forgot the god of heaven he wrote the book of ecclesiastes as a backslidden man death hmm. you are striving for mastery the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully we need to pray and ask God to purge our hearts, vet our tendencies and remove anything that will stop that weight of glory from resting upon us. That is the prayer of the believer in this season. To sit down and say, Lord, you see I'm qualified for this is nonsense. You must cry and tremble before God and say, Lord, I don't even know my tendencies myself. Can I tell you the truth? I don't mean to insult you and I don't want you to feel bad. There are many of you who have been in this city for many years and many decades. You are well-meaning Christians and yet you don't seem to have passed beyond certain doors. I will tell you what is wrong. You have seemed to do everything right. There is something God has seen in your heart that if certain weights of glory rest upon you and that thing has not died, it will end up being a disadvantage. It's like giving a little baby an AK-47 and showing the baby how to shoot. The baby can turn it to himself and shoot and kill itself. Creating me a clean heart, he said. Renew a right spirit. You can have a wrong spirit, not just a demon spirit, a wrong spirit, a wrong motivation. Renew a right spirit within me. This is only the first law so that when you see the unusual exploits that god is doing through men and women across the globe please do not think he's just luck and do not think he's just impartation there is an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it an altar with blood dripping on it a token of death my question to you is are you willing to just keep playing christianity playing nominal christianity or you are really ready to dive into this this river of seriousness and mastery with god to say lord i know that the thoughts you think towards me are not thoughts of evil but of good to bring me a future and an expected end i'm ready to burn the bridges behind me as for you i am i am with you forever and for the rest of my life as for me there is no plan b there is nowhere else to go the bridge is born long bond we live here we die here there is no plan b you have plan b and c and d and e and e and f that's why when you say god i give you everything all the other plans say what of us we are here too you must burn everything and say lord it's all about you remember that our song jesus no this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender listen tonight is not just a teaching if I just stop on this law alone it is sufficient for the night because we are going to take our time and pray and in that prayer you see I'm going to leave you and God alone I'll be doing my own here with my own God 
and you are going to have to pray and say lord you are the one who knows the truth of who i am you are the one who knows the tendencies in my heart you are the one who knows what is blocking what i see in my visions from happening in my life there are there are realms i should have entered now there are dimensions i would have attained there are some of you everything you have seen in your visions not one of it has come to pass because you are too alive in yourself it's a risk for god to allow prophecy to manifest in your life i the lord search the heart i test the reins or the motif to give to every man jeremiah 17 please give it to us 9 and 10 9 and 10 we are going to cry a cry in this place it's going to be a cry of repentance a cry of handover a cry of rededication the meeting is still on tonight will not be fruitful if all we do is just talk about surrender is something that must be practical in our hearts the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it verse 10 it says i the lord i search the heart i try the reins or the motive even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings businessman I tell you you have not handled the wealth of the kingdom yet until you die God can take a man's prayer point and bring to you you see let me tell you this this is the reason why often God will pick people who are nobodies and honor them you know why because of their lowly estate it is easy they are malleable they are not full of themselves they don't they know they don't amount to much in themselves so it's easy for them to give everything and god says i know you can't speak english very well but your yieldedness is what i'm looking for so i can make do with your limitation in english i will still make you an apostle i will still make you a prophet i know that um the way you are there are disadvantages to your life but what i'm looking for is the death and the yieldedness many of us bring our qualifications and everything to God and he says this is not what I'm looking for I know what I'm searching for a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead and he can pour that oil upon you and he can pour that grace upon you look let me tell you it's a spectacular sight to behold when you see a vessel that has been brought like a reed out of fire If you came to church tonight to encounter the God of the Bible, if you came to church tonight because you are serious with God, if you came to church tonight because you truly mean it with Jesus, if you came to church tonight because you know that the spirituality of your life is what controls everything around your life, then it was a good reason to come to church tonight. But if you came to church just to sign the register, that I'm in church today or you came to church to just escort someone for the fun of it I love you with all my heart but I may tell you it was not a wise reason to be in church I submit to you I will say this and we'll begin to pray people see the things that God is doing in and through my life and most times most people think this thing is just luck or this thing is just about anointing i think it's just an impartation that came it's not it's not true believe me when i tell you it's not all about anointing it's not all about just impartation go behind the scenes and you will find a pool of blood that still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar it is from that that covenant of sacrifice because sacrifice is a covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah i've had the privilege of ministering to many people who were involved in occultism or any of these satanic things and i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that they make to move them from level to level some of them will tell you they lie down and sleep on graves 
not in a vision physical graves imagine being in a graveyard only you in the night you are looking for power power for performance or invincibility now you are lying down you want to become an armed robber who can disappear in case they are looking for you and they will give you a strict requirement number one you are fasting day and night there's not like it's not like you are breaking in the night then you are lying down on a grave it doesn't matter what sound you hear you remain there and when they are done with those stringent things after seven days they come out and you just come out carelessly and say i know you can't stand against me let's think well oh let me tell you the truth whether it is through the demonic or through spirituality genuine spirituality sacrifice is a non-negotiable requirement you don't stand up you don't read your bible you are not serious you see someone who day and night he has interacted with spirits physically and he comes to stand and say i will kill you and he say god forbid i won't die you will be surprised our work in this kingdom is based on the covenants your covenant is a voice it can stand to amplify what you represent there are spirits when you speak to they know what they see jesus i know paul i know ask them what they are seeing that makes them count those names the sons of Sceva had zeal. They went to cast out demons just like that. There are many believers who have not satisfied this law. And they will go and carry charms and throw it away. And say, God forbid, Jesus has died. He has won the victory. And you find out that people start dying endlessly. Because they taught something that did not come by sacrifice. Redemption is real. But the administration of mastery in this kingdom subscribes to the law of sacrifice not even jesus evaded it when jesus hung on that cross you thought the father would see him crying and says enough the father left him there till he died and that is the father who is love and the cry of jesus eloi eloi lama sabachthani you thought the father would say no 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 my heart of love jesus still died there Can I tell you the truth? Just because God is love does not mean you will compromise on the law of sacrifice. I respect the body of Christ. I don't criticize men of God. It's not, it's not in my, my office or my call. But I can tell you, be careful what you hear. This is why there is a lot of powerlessness in the body of Christ. We just get up with arbitrary things that cannot stand the test of time in the midst of the darkness and the evil that is in our world. Can I tell you, the very altars that fight many families was initiated by sacrifice. And when we talk of sacrifice, we are not talking money. Because most of the church has reduced sacrifice to money. So the moment you say sacrifice, people just think offering. And they think if I give one million, that's sacrifice. The sacrifice is you, not just the money. No amount of money will replace you. That you go back and you say lord it is not a difficult thing for you to change my story and grant me mastery it is not a difficult thing for you to lift me something must be the limitation and i share with you just one law for tonight death death the sacrifice of total complete surrender can you empty your account if he asks you to <laughs> hmm can you pack all of your clothes can you give up your cars can you give up your houses if he asks you to i'm not saying you should do it you see now all that emotional prayer now has been wiped away by what i'm saying because these are real things you are these are the strings that stop you from moving forward pilots will tell you that the lighter a plane is the easier and faster it can fly is that true the heavier a plane is in fact there are times that based on the size of the plane they can reduce the luggage down so that it does not affect it at flight seeing then that we are surrounded by this so great a cloud of witnesses he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith hear this who for the joy that was set before him 
endured the cross is it in your bible who endured the cross and despised the shame there is endurance when it has to do with being a master and a giant you watch these olympians and you see what they do watch these boxers the world champion in everything sometimes you see them in the morning in a country that has ice and snow and you see them walking out they are sweating but they are walking out with awards in their house yet they are walking out and you are asking what else are you looking for that is what it takes to remain there can i tell you whatever brings you to the place of grace is what will mean you will even need greater weights of it you see all these boxers boxing all these things around and you are saying these guys don't you go and relax and do this I like to watch champions in action it inspires me when you watch a master communicator maybe speaking in an occasion or so and you see how these people they, they use english and i mean dominion over words they can capture your attention with uncanny mastery go and check what they do that led to that result you will go to their homes and see videos and dictionaries they go back to school again and learn English in their homes, ABCs, and train themselves with discipline while others are sleeping. Go and ask the chef what makes him so exceptional that one meal, one meal can be as much as a thousand dollars. One plate. What is in the plate? Find out. Respectfully speaking, even our dear politicians whether you win or lose you are going to go through the labor of going around publicizing and doing all of these things that is some serious effort there go and ask some of the wealthiest ceos around the world you will see them in office over time even when those they have employed have gone home some of them will be there they may sleep in the office sacrifice it is only when it comes to the body of Christ that we just believe that because Jesus has done everything, we just throw it away and just assume that it's at work in my life. But you see that the results don't show, dear people of God. It's why the church remains powerless. It's why the church remains... And for many people, all we know about sacrifice is praying and fasting and study of the bible so the moment i'm praying the moment i'm fasting the moment i'm studying scripture i just believe that i'm going through the sacrifice for greatness not so believe me there is something beyond prayer fasting bible study it is you being the living sacrifice upon that altar lord i have lost the ability to tell you no what you desire is my desire if you tell me go left left i go if you tell me go right right i go whatever you tell me that is it for me if you tell me leave ministry that is it if you say go back to ministry that is it have you gotten to that point believe me if you get to that point you will see something about god god will brand his hand upon your life in a way that will cause your world to marvel this teaching tonight is leaving you with two options one to continue doing christianity the way you are used to doing it or to say i take god seriously from this teaching tonight i may not know all it takes but this one law that i've found i have heard for some of you for the first time others a reiteration i'm going to subscribe let nothing and no one be so great in my life that it takes the place of god if that becomes your prayer and you mean it with all your heart you will count testimonies like the sons of the seashore because your life you things you prayed for and the ones you did not pray for you become a friend of god let's pray Don't forget what I have told you that in this season I discern very strongly that the giver of all good things is coming to his body again and there will be strange distribution of new things God is going to come to believe us there are people who will be enthroned at higher levels a thousand cubits is about to be measured over many believers 
and some will shift into deeper levels of power some will shift into deeper levels of influence some will shift into deeper levels of wealth make sure you subscribe for what god is doing through sacrifice so that you don't become part of those pointing fingers at people and saying don't mind them it's like they are just lucky or no 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 you must make up your mind is someone ready to pray I give you two three minutes alone with God before we do a general prayer please no distraction let's respect what God is doing I want you to cry before the God of your salvation Lord purge my heart purge my heart bring me to a point of total surrender may nothing be too much to give you may nothing be too much to hand over to you you gave me everything the grace to give you everything all our viewers make sure you are praying crying to the god of heaven who are striving for mastery and in addition to understanding the ministry of prayer and its capacity to build the believer we must understand death death to your ego death to your reputation especially make sure you pray lord this my ego this my reputation take it out of the way i desire to serve you acceptably my passion for titles my passion for name my passion for this and that take it out of my life i want to see you exalted that is all i desire jesus exalted jesus enthroned enthroned him beyond your business and thrown him beyond koinonia and thrown him beyond joshua selman lord we exalt you we enthrone you purge our hearts purge our hearts purge our hearts purge our hearts grant us the grace let nothing let no one let no lifting be able to take your place in our lives that which you want is what we also want Go ahead and pray. Speak to him. You're contending for power with God. Lord, I love the ministry, but I exalt you above it. I love the business, but I exalt you above it. I love my wife, my husband, my children, but I exalt you above them. I love the visions you are giving me, boy. I exalt you above them. One more minute. You are praying to the God of heaven. The one secret behind the strange liftings of man the one secret of the kingdom behind the mighty and the marvelous hand of god over the life of an individual you will see god arise for you in ways that will surprise you he will give you even the desire of nations because you would have become his friend hiding no secret from you opening you to deep truths in the spirit empowering you in unusual dimensions wisdom beyond the realm of men hallelujah 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 listen when the lord began to speak to me about the thing he's doing in the body of christ in this season how that he's distributing newer and greater levels of grace God is trusting people with wealth you have never seen. See, let me tell you this. This is not going to be about business alone. I understand principles of value, but this one is God trusting people, seeing that I, my last treasurer betrayed me, that I'm still looking for more. And now you are saying, Lord, I will be a faithful steward, and God will give you what is equivalent to the wealth of nations. There are levels of anointings, 
that will make men will walk like gods upon the earth it is true that their words become like the word of god spectacular manifestations of his power that you look at them you know that this is a man backed by a strange altar with blood dripping on it that we will stop being storytellers in the body of christ and indeed will be proof producers even by the spirit the secret beyond fasting beyond prayer is death there is nothing in my life today i submit to you by the grace of god that i cannot give god there is nothing in my life today that i cannot drop at the altar nothing the worst that can happen to me in this life is that i die and even in death we have cheated it already in victory please everyone in one more minute before i pray for you i want you to rededicate your life again i'm not insulting you i know your spiritual experience but rededicate your life afresh don't say i'm not a sinner i'm not rededicate your life lord i hand it is a handover service again I rededicate my life. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my heart. Everything. One more minute. Just, just pour your, I rededicate everything. For some of you, you are even saying, Lord, let's start afresh again. I don't know the name of what I've been doing, but I can, I can, I can be sure by this message that I've not been serious. Lord, I'm willing to start afresh again. It's better to start afresh than to keep roaming around in pride and ignorance. I can start afresh. We're wrapping up. That's why you came to church. Rededicate yourself. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Let me tell you this. I don't mean to insult you, but the way many of us live our lives, it is proof that we do not yet acknowledge the authority of Jesus over our lives. We are the masters of our own will. You do anything you want to do. He that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Are we together? You cannot live your life anyhow. Anything that just comes into your mind, you do it. No. It's not done that way. And I know when you speak like this, most people feel, oh, it's a liberal society where, well, you can choose to believe what you want to believe. But I am telling you, if it is the God of the Bible you want to walk with, it says the love of God constrains us are we together so don't don't try to modernize christianity don't try to modernize i've told you i'm both new and old school it depends on what you are calling old and what you are calling new nobody leaves what works this is a word of caution because thank god for westernization thank god for technology but many of us have become victims of these things. There is an, an unusual lust for comfort and lawlessness and liberty that is, there is no constraint. Anything goes. It's a social world. I tell you, you will not do business with God that way. I don't insult your pedigree. The choice is yours. But if it is the God of heaven, you must be prepared to go back and say, Lord, I am ready to subscribe to the constraint that brings mastery. Even in the secular, those who are champions are constrained. There are many things they want to do, but they are not given the liberty to. By reason of what they seek, who for the joy that was set before him, 
endured the cross be careful many of us are jumping into all kinds of things no restraint no constraint no nothing you don't care after all i'm just a christian after all this one will happen i don't study my bible i don't care i don't pray i don't care no nothing oh i'm a christian i just come to church no sir no sir all those who have written history that we have we, we we have benefited from them today go and find out the price that they paid i'm speaking to us one more minute before we pray i have to tell you this because most believers you don't like hearing what i'm saying but i love you most times when you say things like this believers become offended because they feel you just preach and leave me to live my life anyhow i promise you by god whether it's god or satan you are serving you live your life anyhow you will not go far with any of them constrain is related to mastery you must be able to constrain yourself can you pray that one prayer lord grant me the grace that i will be able to constrain my life for the sake of the place you are taking me to relationships you need to cut away from people you need to cut away from things you need to cut away from he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. Le Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 says, This is the thing that the Lord command that you should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear to you. Whether you are lying down, kneeling, let me just speak over your life. You don't have to lift your hands, just believe and take it by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and I declare over your life the power to lay it down i decree and declare may that grace be imparted upon you now the power to lay down not just your finances to lay down your ego to lay down your intellect to enthrone christ above anything and everyone in your life may that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus christ and I pray for you there are many of you who by prophecy you are supposed to have entered certain realms realms of mastery realms of prosperity realms of advancement but simply because you have not subscribed to this sacrifice of total surrender you have not given God a chance to move you by reason of your surrender tonight may God speedily bring you into those realms in the name of Jesus Christ anyone and anything in your life that will not allow you to surrender wholly to god i take them out of your life in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you whoever has laughed at you based on your sacrifice and your dedication towards god in the name of jesus help them please i pray by the power that raised christ from the dead may god use the strange results you will bring upon your life to answer them back <laughs> hallelujah please let me encourage you as you go back home go and edit the things you listen to go and edit the things in your house don't say it does not matter for God's sake. You must culture yourself and trust God for grace to give you a new beginning. Let me make the altar call. Our time is fast spent. There's no need cajoling you after a cry and a prayer for sacrifice. You are saying, Apostle, this message tonight is for me. I have violated the first law. I cannot say for sure I have surrendered everything. I may be inside, I may be outside, across the balcony, but I want you to give me a chance with Jesus. Some of you may be saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. Please, let's minimize movement and allow those who need to come out to come out. 
we're wrapping up already wherever you are make sure you don't sit back nobody will force you but this is a decision between you and jesus young and old rich or poor male or female i begin my counting one to five run to the front like there's fire on the mountain one koinonia let's celebrate them as they come come to jesus come to jesus give him a chance to have a new beginning with your life if you're coming please hurry up run to jesus two seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us three are you coming please clear the way for them koinonia celebrate them four i count five and then we'll begin the prayer all the overflows please make sure that you move to your screen and all our viewers following i'm about to pray with them you are there in your home whatever nation of the earth here is your chance to make jesus lord of your life thank you all of you who are out here please may i request that you lift your right hand high above your head please say this after me let it be loud and let it be clear say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i have seen the need to surrender my all hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you